We're now going to focus on roots and views. Now, if any of these terms sound confusing, don't worry. A root is essentially just the URL into what you want to display and your view is what you want to display. So just think of it as a URL and then the markup that you see on the page, that is it. Now we're not gonna be dealing with controllers in this series, but if you want to, you can check out the same version of this series, but the intermediate version over on cocourse.com and that will cover controllers as well as lots more. So let's start by just heading over to our roots file. You can find this over in app, HTTP and roots. Now by default, we have a root here for the home page, which is returning this welcome view. Let's just get rid of this comment as well, and we will check out what this looks like. So the welcome view is over in resources, views, and then welcome. And that, that is literally just what we see on the page here. So if we were to change this to say home, and we go over and refresh, you see that changes. And of course, if we wanted a different URL, we could change this over here as well by going over to home, simple as that. So now that we have this view just here, we need to start thinking about what kind of actions we need to take uh, to create a task. So we're gonna define out our routes first of all. So the first route that we have then is obviously the home page. That is just what we'll see uh, when we uh, land on the site and we will see a list of tasks as well as the ability to create a new task. Now what we also need to do, if we just copy and paste this down, is post to task. Now what this will do is it will create a new task. I'm gonna get rid of this view here as well. So when we post to this route here, we will be able to create a new task in the database. Now, this obviously means that when we submit a form, we need to send through a post request, much like you would normally see uh, outside of a framework like Laravel. Now, we need a last one, and this is to delete a task. So we're gonna say task, but this time, we need to know which task we want to delete. So this will be the ID of the task. And remember, the ID of each task is stored in the database. So they are our three routes. We have get, we have post and we have delete. So now that we've done that, we need to start to look at our views. So I got rid of the welcome view being returned here. So at the moment, if we just head over to the home page, we just see nothing. What we want to do is put together a very basic kind of template for our application. And we do that within views and we create a folder, something like layouts. Now, if you've worked with a templating engine before, like Twig maybe in PHP, this will be familiar to you. But if not, just know that it's a very nice way to structure out your project. You don't have to include anything anywhere. You just extend a base layout. And it's a lot easier than it might sound. So we want then a base layout, and I'm gonna call this app.blade.php. Now, Blade is Laravel's syntax for creating views. We can do things like loop, we can create if statements, we can output things, and we'll see how that works uh, soon. So I'm gonna create a basic template just here, just a standard document, and I'm just gonna update the title. And in the body area, what I want to do is define where my content sits. So I'm gonna create a div with a class of container, and inside of here, I am going to say, well, any content I create in any pages, I want it to sit within here. And that means that we can create lots of different files. We can extend this template and then place the content in here rather than including a header and a footer on every page, which you may be used to doing outside of a framework. So now that we have this, then we're going to be working with the front end framework bootstrap. It's just very quick to get going with. Obviously it doesn't look great out of the box, but it's just nice to just start working with. So I'm going to head over to the uh, bootstrap website, it's just getbootstrap.com, And I'm going to go down and I'm going to pull this in via a content delivery network, just so we don't have to download it to our computer. And all I want to do is paste that into the head of my page. So we want to create then the index for our tasks. This is the only view we're going to be creating, but obviously later on, you're gonna be creating lots of different views within Laravel. So inside of here, I want to create a new folder called tasks. And inside of this, I want to create a new file and I'm gonna call this index.blade.php. 
So this is the uh, task view where we see our form and a list of our tasks. Now we know that we want to extend our base layout. So to do this, we say something like layout.app. Now dot just means go into the directory. You can use forward slashes if you prefer. Uh, I just prefer using the dot syntax. And in here, we want to define out the section. So in this case, it's content. And then down here, we end that section like so. So if we place something in here, say task index, what should now happen is if we return this view rather than our default welcome view, which we can actually get rid of, we should see this content here placed within here. So that is the basic uh, idea of templating. So over in roots, then let's update our home route to return view, much like we did with welcome, but this time it's tasks.index. And again, you can use a forward slash here if you want. So now when I head over to the home page just here, we see task index. And if we just view the page source of this, you will see that we have this content placed where we wanted. So that is it. And there we go. And we can already see this looks a little bit nicer than what we would normally see because we've gone ahead and pulled in Bootstrap. So now that all that's left to do for this part is to create the form just up here that we will be posting through to this route to create our task. So if we go over to here, we can start to define out this form. Now I'm going to be using some bootstrap markup. If you're not familiar with bootstrap, don't worry, just go ahead and copy down what I write. And of course, if you want to learn bootstrap later on, uh, you can do. So we have a div here with the class of panel, and this will also have a class of panel default. This will create something like the following, like so. And inside of here, we can create another class panel body, and we get the following. There we go. So it's just a little bit of a nicer way to represent what we want. Now inside of here, we're going to have a form. The action is where we want to post this through to. And the method is the method we want to use. Now we know we want to use the post method because we define this out just here. So we're posting through to that route. So for the action, then we need to know where we're posting this through to. And to do this, we use the URL method and then we give the name of the URL. In this case, it's tasks, so or task rather, so we just see task there. Now there are other ways of doing this. We will cover that in the intermediate and of course in any other Laravel uh, series we have. So last but not least for this form, I just want to give it a class of form horizontal, like so, and that will just aid with the styling. So for the task then, we have a form group. Again, this is just bootstrap styling. And we have a label, so we can say task, and then we have an input as well. So inside of here, we can create our input. This is going to be the type of text. We can give this a name, which we're just going to say name. We're going to give this an ID of name as well, and we can update our label. So that clicks through into that input. And we want to give this a class of form control as well. So let's just preview this and then we'll tidy it up if we need to. So that currently looks like the following. So it's not great. Let's just wrap then our input in a smaller column. So we'll say six. So this is just bootstraps grid system like so. So we should now see the following that looks a little bit better. But of course, we can just go and update our label here with a similar thing. So we can give this a class of column small. And this will be six or three rather. And lastly, what we want to do is also give this a class of control label, which should make it look like so perfect. Well, not perfect, but as good as we want to learn Laravel. So the last thing that we want then is a submit button to actually submit this. So just under this form group, we can create a new form group just here. And inside of this, we want a small column or on a small viewport, we want to offset it by three. And we also want it to be six columns in width. So again, don't worry too much if this doesn't make a lot of sense. Of course, you don't need to learn bootstrap uh, to work with Laravel. So this is going to be a button with a type of submit inside of here, I'm going to write add tasks. So let's just quickly take a look at this. So looks okay. 
And just to make the button look a little bit prettier, we can add a class here of BTN and then BTN default. And this will create uh, a nice styled button like so. Okay, so now that we have this done, we can look at submitting this. And then because we've covered a fair bit here, we're gonna go on to the next part and look at validation. So when I click on this, notice that we see an error, token mismatch exception. Now, if you've tried to work with Laravel before, you might've seen this. So we're gonna look at uh, cross-site request forgery in the next part, which again, sounds a lot more complicated than it is. So there we go. Although we've had to write a lot of bootstrap markup, which isn't entirely necessary, uh, we've gone ahead and looked at our roots, which are really important, and we've looked at our views. So now we can move on to validation and we can look at fixing this cross-site request forgery error.